Hi, I'm David Kaufman, voice of Jimmy Olsen in Superman the Animated Series. And uh, we're here to catch up with some of the writers and creators from the show, hang out, ask them a few questions, find out what was going on in their mind as they were working on the show. I have a couple questions myself about uh, Jimmy. Let's find out. Follow me. Hey guys! Hey, hey David! How's hey. it going? Hey, nice to see you. Good to good see, see you. you. Yeah. How's it going, David? Uh, very, very good. Long time no see. Yeah. A couple of years long. since we did the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was told you hang out here every Wednesday. Yeah. This is this is our place. Really? New comic day. We're here. Seriously, yeah. very cool. Say hi to everybody. Introduce yourself. Uh, Glenn Murakami. Bruce Tim. Paul Dini. Alan Burnett. Let me ask you some questions about the show in terms of. These final 18 episodes tended to start the inclusion of Jack Kirby's uh, fourth world characters. Right. Um, what was your thoughts behind bringing those characters in the show? Well, for a number of things, Superman is such a powerful character. You really, we have always had a problem finding powerful villains to throw up against him. So Jack Kirby's uh, Dark Side character is like one of the major heavy hitters of the DC universe. And we're all like big Jack Kirby fans anyways and look for any opportunity to, you know, use his stuff and, and animation. Also, when uh, The Fourth World was first introduced into the comics, um, it, one of the first books that it was introduced in was Jimmy Olsen Comics. And so there was a Superman connection there already. So we weren't just like drafting, you know, the fourth world into the Superman mythos just willy-nilly. I mean, there was a precedent for it. Let us begin at the beginning. What once was whole was split asunder. And in its place there arose two worlds. Worlds as different as daylight and darkness. It's just a real rich comic book mythology. I mean, it's, it's like a whole big, you know, super involved backstory, which we simplified, of course, for animation. But... Um, but there's just a lot of really rich story material there. Not every hero starts off with a great cast of villains, and Supermans are kind of, you know, they're, they're okay, but when you bring in a character like Darkseid and the whole uh, planet of Apocalypse, you've got all these great characters who can match him power for power, and also the idea that Darkseid is a dictator and Superman represents, you know, freedom. You can't beat that. Did you find more limitation uh, in terms of it being... Uh, animation uh, as opposed to a comic book or or did you find that that gave you a whole new world to, that you could go into well uh, like I said the, the the thing about the the fourth world stuff is that it's it's really pretty involved I mean it, originally in the comics it was like four different separate 
interlocking comics, and, and even then it was still uh, just this big sprawling epic, and so we kind of had to really condense it down to its bare essentials to be able to shoehorn it into the Superman story. It wasn't limiting so much as just that it was it, it was tricky just trying to figure out how to condense it down and, and, and have it still make sense and, and still kind of retain what it was in the comics that, that, that made it, you know, good. Mm -hmm. So it was tricky. Especially dealing with uh, one episode, per se, at a time. Yeah, right. That short of a, a time period to work with. Yeah, they were big epic stories, so usually we would save the apocalypse stuff until we had a two-parter. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. That's right. We used Apocalypse Hunt about how many episodes? Well, we had two episodes where we kind of hinted at it first. Right. We had the one with Tools of the Trade, where we just kind of, you know, introduced a little bit of it. And then Father's Day was when Calabac came in and basically just fought Superman for 20 minutes. And then we did uh, Apocalypse Now, Little Girl Lost, and Legacy. And all of those were two-parters. So about so, eight. Yeah. You're a magnificent opponent, Superman. But even you must realize it's hopeless. Did you guys feel that there was, um, like, a difference in the show, like, with the direction of the show, when those characters were involved? Clearly. Um, I think the show started getting a little bit darker. <laughs> Glenn gives me a hard time about that. It, yeah. it, it's uh, um, the stuff that we were the most into, that we felt the most connection to. Um, I think we also felt the Kirby stuff, we can put our stamp on the show, that uh, things that no one else had ever seen in like a Superman cartoon before. Mm -hmm. So that I think that's what we really liked about it. Right. But uh, the stories did get a little bit more, not necessarily darker, but, but deeper. I mean, especially after Apocalypse Now, what, what, what Superman goes through in Apocalypse Now is kind of such a horrendous thing. And from, from that point on, at the end of that story, Darkseid is like way, way up at the top of Superman's you know, hate list. So from that point on, every time you know, Superman ran across Darkseid or his minions, Superman like instantly gets grouchy. I mean, it's, it's always like it's a bad day for Superman when Darkseid and gang show up. So it's, it's interesting to us because Superman is one of those characters. It's like you don't necessarily want to play him dark or gritty and angry and all the time, but he is kind of so inherently good that you need to kind of break that mold a little bit every now and then to, so that he's not just namby pamby. You know, mm -hmm. you have to kind of, you know, you got to kind of test him a little bit. So um, so Darkseid was really good for that. The last episode of Superman was actually the second part of a two-part Darkseid story. Um, I mean, it's actually a pivotal moment for our Superman and Lois. I mean, they kiss for the first time in that show. And uh, so that's kind of a turning point for them. Too bad it was the last episode, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. But The intention uh, was to make Superman distrusted now. Right. In those last two episodes, because Darkseid took him over, and there was a, he was doing things that he wouldn't have done had he not been under Darkseid's control. So. But yeah, that whole last season of Superman was going to be a little bit more about the world learning to trust Superman again and Superman trying to regain their trust. And there were um, other, other um, DC characters that came in in, in these uh, last few episodes, right. too. Uh, how did that uh, come about? I don't know. I think it was those guys. Well, Superman seems to lend himself more for guest stars than Batman did. We did relatively few guest stars on Batman. Superman has, is so much more powerful than Batman you kind of want to throw other heroes in there with him and, mm -hmm. you know, raise the stakes a little bit. You know, Aquaman is kind of a natural uh, Green Lantern. They all fit, you know, they dovetail into Superman's world, which is a much more superpowered world, whereas Batman is much more of a gritty film noir type of world. The villains there are more, uh, you know, out of, out of diseased minds than they are out of, uh, you know, superpowers mm -hmm. than, than anything. So the, the guest stars just seem to seem a little bit more natural in Superman's world. <laughs> I don't believe it. A super girl? Believe it. What about the introduction of uh, Supergirl? Supergirl is something that we wanted to do from very early on. I know Glenn, were, Glenn and I were really keen on doing Supergirl. And, um, and she's a big part of the mythos anyways, you know, from the comics and stuff. So um, we, we, we figured we'd have to get around to her eventually someday. And kind of always liked the character. And we kind of wanted to put our own spin on her. And mm -hmm. um, It's kinda... just a contrast. And then having Superman having to deal with like a... So cute, it was definitely a cute, bratty kind of girl. Yeah, you know, it, it was definitely something you guys wanted to do, as opposed to like. Oh yeah, the, the network didn't come to us and say, "Yeah, you have to put in a girl for for girl viewers or whatever." No, it was something we wanted to do. So mm -hmm. uh, there was just only one restriction, I think, was that she couldn't come from Krypton. They were going through a phase where they're saying the last son of Krypton, last last Kryptonian, so, so he's the last one. Yeah, we created a sister planet called Argo, which in some way referenced Argo City, which is where she was from on Krypton originally. Mm -hmm. 
So it was like a sister planet where the I guess the Kryptonians had colonized you know hundreds or thousands of years before. Right. So they were very similar to the Kryptonians. Yet when Krypton blew up, their world was thrown out of out of orbit. And we actually kind of. S- skated some of that stuff by. If you remember, DC actually specifically requested that her powers not be exactly like Superman's. Right. They said because she's technically not Kryptonian, so, you know, Earth sunlight should affect her differently. And we said, oh, yeah, we'll give her some different powers. And We never did. I mean, yeah. I, 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 a line here or there, maybe Kryptonite doesn't affect her as quickly as it affects Superman, or she's not as strong. But, yeah. You know, that was sort of lost to time. How about the... Um, any Any specific episodes... Uh, that you can one of the episodes I like on this on this reel is uh, Nighttime, which is the one where Superman assumes Batman's identity, mm-hmm. and because they're, Batman's missing, and so he's working with Robin to try and track him down. The city of Gotham's going a little wild because everybody thinks Batman's gone, and so he reappears as Batman and pretends to be Batman. Bob Goodman wrote that, and there's a lot of humor in it. There's one great scene where he beats up Bane, and you just mm-hmm. you just love that scene. Mm-hmm. I love that scene. I like seeing Superman doing his impression of Batman. But, uh, I mean, when he's yeah. like talking to Commissioner Gordon, and he's like standing, you know, ramrod stiff with yeah. his chin in the air and being all aloof. And oh, that's a that's a good episode. I like that one a lot. <laughs> um, Demon Reborn. There's another one. Demon there. Reborn is another one of our Superman Batman team up episodes, which we did uh, rather a number of, I suppose, once once we brought Batman back. Yeah, that's the one where uh, Rachel Ghoul is like getting really, really old and his Lazarus Pit thing isn't working anymore, so he wants to steal Superman's power to rejuvenate himself. Nice looking. Yeah, a- looking any, any other episodes you can remember from this batch that you, you were particularly proud of? I like Absolute Power. The artist did a great job on it. It's a, I, they created a whole new world. It was one of those shows that I didn't like the script very much, but the the only thought, the only way I thought could make it appealing to me was just to go crazy with the sci-fi elements. And and yeah, we designed the Paul Revoche went crazy designing the world, and I designed all the spaceships. We had good storyboard guys. We had Lee Weeks, the famous comic book artist, doing storyboards from that episode. I know we did it really fast. I just thought I was impressed with the world. We did it really fast. Really yeah. And the black hole effect. Oh, yeah, that's right. The black hole yeah. effect. That's right. That, I think that's the reason you wanted to do that story in the first place. You said, I want this big black hole. And I said, Alan, do you know how difficult it is to do a black hole in animation? And this is before we had digital effects, too. This is yeah. like, you know, we had to do it all old school. But, um, yeah. Production wise, we were cranking. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, we must have been doing Batmans one. at that same time, too. Yeah. yeah. We were. Yeah. This set also has, unfortunately, some of the worst episodes we've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> Such as? Well, hate to say it. Superman's, Superman's Pal. Pal. It's Superman's not Pal. a good show, unfortunately, I don't think. I think it's a good idea for a show, but the execution is just not there. It's like, uh, I don't know. Who's execution? Man, Who's execution? Oh, you were perfect. <laughs> no, you were fine. <laughs> you. It's, it's, yeah. not, it's not your fault. It's just, <laughs> no, we fell down. I had to say well, it. you know Somebody what? But there's there are people who are probably wondering about that episode. What were they thinking about this one? And it's, it's somebody's I think it's good favorite to, episode. Probably, yeah, could maybe. Be. Well, there's an episode on here that a lot of people also could consider one of our worst episodes, Unity. And I always kind of liked it. I oh, know. I like that. That's a lot I always kind of liked Unity, yeah. but but people just hate that episode. Why? Because it's really weird and, and <laughs> grotesque. Which one's and that? Super real. With, with the creepy preacher guy, but he's actually an alien, and he's got. He's in Smallville, wow. and he's got like a, a hive, a hive mind colony thing happening with all the people in Smallville, and they like wow. vomit these big alien tentacles and oh, stuff. Oh, it's gross, but it's fun. What are you gonna do? Settle it. Once and for all. As you look back, did you guys find that you accomplished uh, what you set out to do at the beginning of, of the the series? We kind of touched a lot of the different bases in, in, in the Superman mythos. I mean, you know, we got to do all the, you know, the major things. You know, we got to do Bizarro and Nixus Pitlick and, you know, Supergirl and uh, Superman's pal, mm-hmm. you know, the origin story. And, and it was kind of, you know, we kind of were able to, like, pay homages to all our favorite versions of Superman, you know, from the Fleischers and, you know, the, the Christopher Reeve movies and whatnot. I mean, this stuff all blends together a lot better than I ever thought it did. Mm-hmm. But, um, I mean, even shows that I didn't think were all that great when we worked on them, I watch them now and go, wow, this is a really good episode. So, so if you guys had the chance, would you like to take another crack at uh, doing the show again? Not necessarily redoing it, but doing it again? I'd love to take another shot at Superman. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be a lot of fun. It's like sure. Batman. Once we did it the second time, I think we figured out mm-hmm. how to do it better. 
I think the same thing with Superman. We sure. kind of worked all the bugs out. I think, yeah, not only did we figure out a little bit more who Superman and Clark were, but also some of the interpersonal dynamics between Jimmy and Lois and Perry and the Kents, you know, and you can go back and revisit that stuff and broaden those characters a little more once you've established them and use those for potential, you know, story material. Same with the villains, too. You go in and you tweak them and you work with them a little bit or you bring in some new characters, you know, perhaps from the comics and, and uh, you know, shake things up and then you, then you find yourself having fun with it. A lot of, of Superman's success depends on how well he's animated to me, to see the musculature and see the, the sense of flight with the cape mm -hmm. and everything. I mean, he really depends on that. We were lucky in a lot of cases to get really good results. Yeah, there's some that are like a, right like, up there with our best that's, work. That's yeah. really good stuff. Mm -hmm. It's fun seeing, what does the world think of this guy? Here's one guy who, who's kind of like a god on earth, and how, how, do, how does the world relate to him? What does he do? And, and how does he like make life better for people? And what's their perception of him? And I think when you do the stories that are just Superman and the world, you get, you know, you have a chance to really sit and think about what that means and go off on, on you know, who the character is and how he relates to people. It's kind of fun. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, anything else you'd want to say about the show? Two more shows with Jimmy in it, I guess. <laughs> more shows with Jimmy, yeah. 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 One word. Spinoff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Super Olsen. Super, Super Olsen. Olsen. What do you think? Well, you know, that would be one thing if we ever went back and did, did a Superman show. New, new batches of Superman. That would be something we should definitely look into is giving mm -hmm. Jimmy superpowers. Keep it. Mm -hmm. Clearly. Yep. Good. Mr. Big Boat. Thing. A last lad needs to be done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Glenn, Bruce, Paul, Alan. Um, I had a great time. I learned some things. I'll see you around. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Don't be a stranger. I won't. I'll, I'll be waiting by the phone. Uh, okay. Tomorrow. The adventures actually. of Jimmy. So just uh, The last a lad. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna hold it to Okay. Okay. Bye, <laughs> bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in to Warner Home Videos Superman the Animated Series Volume Three. Hope you had a good time. I did, and uh, hope you had a little insight to uh, what made Superman tick. I got some comics to read. Bye. Mm -hmm.